Good day, folks. Welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. I'm making this video here to help you out with your Unit 2 homework, uh, Unit 2 over Newton's Laws. And uh, we're going to talk about problems 7, 8, and 9 again in your Unit 2 homework. So, number 7, let's see, it says a sprinter with a mass of 84 kilograms accelerates from 0 to 9 meter per second in 3 seconds. So your homework problem, uh, these are randomized, so you may have slightly different numbers, but in any case, everyone is given a mass, right? In the one I'm looking at here, it says 84 kilograms. Everybody is given an initial velocity. In my problem, that's zero meter per second. And everybody's given what would be a final velocity. In my problem, that's nine meter per second. And a time frame. In my problem, three seconds. So when you work these, what I recommend is that you, um, you know, draw a quick picture that kind of describes the problem, right? So we have a sprinter who starts out here at rest. So in this picture here, they might be moving at zero meter per second. And then sometime later, humor me, that's a pretty crummy photo, but sometime later, the person would be moving to the right at nine meter per second. And again, you'll have different values. Now, part A says, what is the uh, runner's acceleration? So for part A, you can calculate the acceleration right from uh, uh, how acceleration is mathematically uh, calculated, delta V over delta T. You can get that from these values given and the delta T that's given. So that should be pretty straightforward. Part B, where it says, what is the net force on the run acting on the runner during this time frame? So that's a Newton's second law question. Net force is equal to mass times acceleration, where the mass is uh, given in the problem. Part C, it says, how far does the sprinter go during the three seconds? So the how far, that's a motion question. So that's the type of stuff that we talked about in unit one. Start by drawing a velocity graph. In at t equals zero here, the person's not moving. So the first point on that graph might be something like this, zero, zero. Then sometime later, we now have a velocity. And I don't want to finish this for you, but what you do is you put that point on this graph where it belongs. Then you connect the dots between this point and your next point. Then the when you do that, the area bound under the curve will give the displacement. So that's pretty much uh, number seven in a nutshell. I think what I'll do here is pause this for a moment and uh, kind of set it up for number eight. All right, so uh, I'm back here. I've gotten rid of uh, the information from number seven. We're going to consider that one I've talked about. So number eight, it says, let's see, a, a baseball is being caught. Its speed goes from 42 meter per second to zero meter per second in 0 .008 seconds. Its mass is 0.145 kilograms. What's the ball's acceleration? So to calculate the acceleration, very similar to the uh, problem we just did. Acceleration is change in velocity over change in time. There's enough information in the problem to calculate this and this. You should get a negative number when you do this because the velocity is decreasing. Uh, I'm guessing that the homework system is going to want the minus sign uh, to get the uh, to give you credit for it. Let's see, number two, what is the acceleration in G's? Or, or not two, but part B. How many G's is this? Now, for starters, this concept of G's is it's just kind of slang. Gravitational acceleration is around is uh, about 9.8 meter per second squared or meter per second per second. And for the sake of discussion, I like to round that to approximately 10 meter per second per second. So what that means, let's say that we had a rocket or something that was accelerating at 30 meter per second squared. We would call that about a 3G acceleration. Now, notice if you take the 30 and divide by 10, you get the 3. So being a little more specific in, in this example and using the 9.8 instead of the 10, take the acceleration you found from part A and just divide it by 9.8 and that will tell you how many multiples of uh, G the acceleration is. Uh, next question, I guess it says part B, what is the size of the force acting on it? 
oh, mine actually labels that as B as well. Okay, it was A and then unlabeled and then B on the one I'm looking at. All right, so size of the force. So that can be uh, found by Newton's second law. Net force equals mass times acceleration. Mass is given in the problem. Acceleration you found in part A. So that should be enough to knock over uh, problem nine. Or I'm sorry, eight. Let me get rid of this. And we'll chat a little bit about number nine. Let's see, on an aircraft carrier, catapults are used to accelerate a jet from or over speeds over a very short distance. In the example I'm given, the jet has got a mass of 1,800 kilograms. Write that down. And again, you may have different values on your homework. And uh, I'm sorry, not 1,800, 18,000 kilograms. And it goes from zero to 65 meter per second in 2.8 seconds. So, it's important to know what these numbers are. This is an initial velocity, this is a final velocity, and this is a delta t. So part A, to calculate the acceleration, just like the previous problems, just start with how acceleration is calculated. Change in velocity over change in time. And again, remember, this would be slope of a velocity curve. Uh, that would be, you know, you get your change in velocity from this, your delta t from this. You know, alternatively, we could think of it, rather than calculating it using this equation, you could also calculate it using the idea of slope. If you were to draw a velocity graph, velocity against time, the first time here is zero. So this means that t equals zero, this thing's not moving yet. So the point, first point on this graph would be zero, zero. And then 2.8 seconds later, I know I've got a velocity here, so I could come over here to 2.8. That's 2.8 seconds, and then put that 65 meter per second or whatever number you have up here somewhere. Again, it doesn't really matter how high you draw this on a sketch. You're kind of free to set your own scale. We'll assume constant acceleration, which makes your velocity graph linear. And then the slope of this line gives the acceleration. Keep in mind that that distance here would be the 65 meter per second. Part B, where it says, how far does the jet travel The jet travel while this is occurring? So this area under this graph is going to give you the how far. Part C, how large a force uh, is exerted on that jet? So part C is a Newton's second law question. Net force is equal to mass times acceleration, and, and the mass is given in the problem and the acceleration you find in a previous part. So that should be enough to knock over number nine. Um, I hope that this stuff is uh, coming along for you folks. Again, feel free to call or email me or post questions on the forum if you need anything, and I'll keep uh, making videos for you. Hope you have a great day.